Welcome to Principles of Macroeconomics. This lecture will cover Chapter 1, called The Economic Approach. The textbook for this course will be Macroeconomics, Private and Public Choice, by Wortney, Stroop, Sobel, and MacPherson. So, what is economics? Economics is a study of human behavior under the condition of scarcity. And scarcity occurs when there is less of a good freely available than people would like. That is, people have unlimited wants and desires, but we only have limited resources available. For example, if a resource is scarce, such as gasoline, if the price of gasoline was zero, there would not be enough of it to go around to satisfy our wants and our demand for gasoline consumption. So rationing is used to allocate this limited supply of scarce resources among people who would like to have more of it. The price mechanism of markets is a form of rationing, and only those willing to pay for the good get to have it. Next, we will take a look at economics and behavior. As economists, we assume that people behave rationally to maximize their utility. In other words, they are economizers. And utility refers to the subjective benefit or satisfaction that a person receives from a choice or a course of action. And it's a subjective benefit because people value resources differently. One person's enjoyment of a good or service is going to be different and maybe higher or lower than another person's enjoyment of that same good or service. And individuals will try to make decisions to maximize these subjective benefits, but at the same time, they will try to reduce the cost of the decisions that they make. A key concept in economics is this idea of an opportunity cost. When people make choices, they often incur an opportunity cost. This is the highest valued alternative that is foregone or sacrificed as a result of choosing an option or taking a course of action. For example, if I go to the movies tonight, I will have less time to study economics. The opportunity cost of seeing the movie, then, is the study time and the benefit that you must sacrifice in order to go to the movies. Another concept which will be important in coming chapters is this idea of marginal analysis. When thinking about economic behavior, remember that individuals and consumers tend to think at the margin. And marginal refers to the effects of a change in the current situation. And it is generally the additional costs and or benefits realized from increasing an activity by one unit. So marginal is synonymous with additional. For example, the marginal cost of producing automobiles refers to the additional cost of building one more car. This is much different than average costs, which are the total costs for a corporation divided over the number of cars produced. This simply says, how much more will we spend to produce an additional car? Another concept that is generally overlooked but that economists like to analyze is this idea of secondary effects. Secondary effects are important to consider in policy analysis. That is, the laws and regulations imposed by governments or political bodies. A secondary effect is an indirect impact of an event or policy which may not be immediately observable. It may come one or two years after the initial policy. For example, the primary effect of an effective maximum price on gasoline will be lower fuel prices almost immediately. So if you have high gas prices, maybe due to an oil shortage, in some cases governments will try to prevent gasoline prices from going too high, so they will impose a price ceiling. However, the secondary effect may include gasoline shortages for consumers. That is, as the price is kept artificially low, there is more demand than producers are willing to supply. 
Another distinction that you must know is the difference between positive and normative economics. As economists, we want to only focus on positive rather than normative economics. And positive economics is really the scientific study of what is. It tries to analyze the cause and effect relationships that we observe in economic phenomena. Normative economics, on the other hand, refers to judgments about what ought to be in economic matters. That is, we only care about objective facts that are observable and can be tested. Finally, we must look at some major pitfalls in economic thinking. The first one is called the fallacy of composition, and this is the erroneous view that what is true for one person is also true for a group. So you can think of one person at a football game, and if they stand up, they're able to get a better view of the game, but that's not necessarily the case if all the spectators stand up. And this applies to a lot of policy areas in economic analysis. Good intentions do not guarantee desirable outcomes. This is another common pitfall, and what we want to look at are the actual effects of government policies rather than the desired effects, because what actually happens in practice is often very different than the results that policy makers intend. Another common pitfall is that association is not necessarily the same as causation. So if two events occur together, it does not necessarily mean that event A caused event B to happen. For example, one psychological study found that ice cream sales may actually be positively associated with the murder rate in New York City, but this does not mean that increased ice cream consumption amongst New York City residents caused the murders. It's simply a result of some variable in the background, and they found that higher temperatures were actually causing both the murder rate and the increased ice cream consumption. So this is important. What we care about, what our goal is, is to analyze the cause and effect relationships. We want to understand why economic events occur and what causes them.